In games, we often need to detect when two objects collide with each other and respond to them. Godot offers a number of collision objects, both 2D and 3D, and deciding which to use for your project can be complicated. We'll be looking at four types of collision objects and how each works from the 2D aspect. Though both the 2D and 3D collision objects work similarly and is not of much difference. Godot Collision Object 2D offer four kinds of collision objects, which are the Area 2D, and the last three which inherit from the Physics Body 2D are the Character Body 2D, the Static Body 2D, and the Rigid Body 2D. All collision objects require at least a collision shape or polygon to help define the object's collision bound to detect collisions. The area 2D detects when objects overlap each other and emit a signal, making it useful for power ups or pick up, hit boxes, and odd boxes that require interaction with the player. In this example, we have a player that collects cherries and is added to the cherry total count. Then a sign the player can interact with and display a dialog. If we take a look at the same dock, the player has a warning telling us the area requires a collision shape or polygon in order to interact with other objects in the game. In my player scene, I've added a collision shape, which gives a warning telling us to provide a shape for the body. I'm going to use the capsule shape 2D, which is a good cool fit for the player. Now, if we take a look at the aspect of our player, which is an area 2D, it has a bunch of properties and we'll look at few of them. The gravity, linear and angular damp section we'll look at later on. The collision tab, which is below the collision object to the heading, we see two properties with a bunch of numbers, which are the collision layer and max of an object. The collision layer defines the layer an object is on and this allows the object to detect collision with it. The collision marks, on the other hand, defines what layer the body scans for collision with. If an object isn't on the body's marks layer, the body ignores it. By default, both the collision layer and marks are set to layer 1 and have up to 32 layers for you to choose from. Let's say we are working on a bigger project. It can get confusing trying to remember what a layer body was on. We can solve this by customizing a layer name for each layer. To set the layer name, go to Project Setting. Under the Layers Name heading is a 2D physics section where we can customize a layer name for all 32 collision layers. I've set the layer 1 and 2 name to Player and Sign as they are the only objects that need to be monitored in our game. Last off is the monitoring and monitoring bool property and turning the monitoring on means the body scans for collision with other objects from its collision max. So toggling it off stops scanning for collision even if you set a collision max for the body to scan. Now for monitoring bool, toggling it on means the body can be detected by other objects that are scanning for it. Let's take a practical example on how the collision layer works and its usefulness. In my main scene, I've duplicated the sign node and our player scene, we see a dialog scene which is being displayed when the player interacts with the sign. Then we see this signal icon. If we click, we see a list of signals. Every node has a signal that is emitted when a certain event happens and we've connected the area entered and exited signal which is emitted whenever an area object collides with the body then we validate if the colliding area is a sign and show or hide the dialogue but when we run the game and the player tries interacting with both signs the first sign seems to be working but the second sign doesn't and that's because we're checking if the colliding area name is a sign, which the second sign isn't. So, how do we solve this? Well, we could make use of groups. 
Well, no, that isn't the right way to do it. Instead, we should make use of the collision layers and max. Now, let's set the dialog and other game objects to their right collision layers. The player just needs to be monitored, no monitoring, and we'll set it to the player layer and it's max to none. And in our dialog info, we need to monitor for the sign. So we'll toggle off the monitorable and toggle off a layer and just set its max to design. Then I will also remove the validation check in the dialog script since we don't need it anymore. And our sign just needs to be monitored and I'll set its layer to the sign layer and max to none. And last is our cherry, which needs to monitor for the player. So his max is already on the player layer. Now, when we run the game, the player collects his cherries and is able to interact with both signs, which is what we want. Now, let's talk about the area override. And the example you see was gotten from the Godot documentation, link in the description. And if you found any value in this video, can you give it a thumbs up and hopefully if subscribed, that will really make my day. And you will also get notified when a video is out. Now back to the area override, which we can use to override physics properties like gravity and dams in a defined area. This example, we have a point gravity, a linear damp, and a reverse gravity. The point gravity is used to define gravity from a certain point. If we check the point area under the gravity section, we set the space override to replace the gravity property of the colliding body. And by default, this is set to disabled. We toggled on the point property which calculates gravity from a certain point. And we have gravity, which we use to set the intensity of the gravity in the area. Then the linear damp, we set the linear damp space override to replace the linear damp property to 10, which is the rate at which an object stops moving in the area, making the ball move slowly down when it enters the area. Last is the reverse gravity which we set the direction y value to a negative one, changing the gravity's direction. But we can also alter the force of gravity without changing its direction. And when we spawn a ball, it still works the same. Next up is the character body, and I'll be using a project from one of my previous video, if you're interested, I'll leave a link in the description. The character body is for implementing bodies that are controlled with code, meaning you have more precise control on how they move and react. They detect collision with other bodies when moving and are not affected by the engine physics properties. We have a player, which is of a type character body 2D. Also, a heat and hot boss component for dealing and detecting damages. The character body has a few properties and we also see the collision, layer and max. Let's take a look at the script. And we see a bunch of code. The character body has a method for checking if the body collided with the floor called the is on floor method. Also, a bunch of orders for checking if it's collided with a wall or ceiling. The character body has two methods for moving the body, which are the move and slide and move and collide method. The move and slide method moves the body, and when it collides with another, it slides the body along the other body rather than stopping it immediately. The move and collide, when it comes in contact with another body, stops the body immediately. These methods also report collision. Example with the move and slide. We look through the numbers of time the body collided. 
then call the get slide collision which returns a kinematic collision to the containing information about the collision then lastly we print the colliders object if you want to learn more on the character body by building a platformer with inheritors and components you can check out the video which is linked in the description below now our last example we'll be using to explain the static body and rigid body and this example was also gotten from the godot documentation link in the description the static body is one that isn't moved by the physics engine they participate in collision detection but don't move in response to them this makes them good for objects like trees building or other objects that do not need any dynamic behavior our example we have a bunch of walls of a type static body 2d and there are a few properties both the static body and rigid body have a physics material used to set the object's friction bounds or set if it's rough or absorbent the constant linear velocity which doesn't move the body but affect touching bodies as if it were moving and the constant angular velocity which doesn't rotate the body but affects touching bodies as if it were rotating and when we change the constant linear velocity y value and when we instance a ball we see it affects the ball linear velocity but the wall isn't moved in response to its collision and last is the rigid body which is controlled by the physics engine in order to simulate the behaviors of physical objects in the spectral there is a bunch of properties like the physics material we showed earlier on then also the gravity scale that multiplies the gravity applied to the body the rigid body can also emit a signal when it collides with other rigid body if we set the contact monitor to true and also the mass contact is set greater than zero then we have the linear section where we can set the linear velocity then there is a damp mode that defines the damp applied and combine means we add its value while replace means well we replace its value then last is the angular section which is for the body's rotation then and um, like other nodes we also have the collision section for setting the body's collision layer and max head over to our community tab and be a part of our community we make posts regularly to keep the engagement going and we we'll also like your feedback to help improve the viewing experience well anyway it has been a fun experience and thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next video